Hey there, welcome to the webinar. My name is Steve Jaguer. I'm a developer advocate for Bridge Crew. And in this show, we're going to, while well, you just set up on the screen, what is the cost of a secret? Identifying secrets with Chekhov before public exposure. As I said, my name is Steve Jaguer. I'm a developer advocate. That's my Twitter. And check out that loose lips might sink ships. I found that that is some, I guess you'd call it, I don't know if we call it propaganda. I guess it is kind of called that from World War II from the United States. And it still applies today. It's interesting that information leakage can cause some form of damage regardless of the context. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. How can we mitigate the damage of releasing secrets, but also find secrets as early as possible in our software supply chain? How can we do that? So let's go for it. All right, so next. Let's look at some horror stories, <laughs> starting with the fear, as always, right? The first one goes way back to 2014. Brian Hellyer did, did actually a lot of the right things. He was trying to give back by pushing his WordPress website into GitHub. He knew that the WP config, which is kind of where all the secrets live in WordPress, decide what you want about that from a security perspective, but he knew that was a bad thing to push. He put it into his own directory, added it to the git ignore, all good things, but missed one critical piece. And that was that there was a, a backup mechanism that created a dot save version of that. That was not in the git ignore that got into AWS that got into GitHub, sorry. And within, well, he went to sleep, big mistake doing things just before you, uh, you go to bed. Six hours later, wakes up, he has a bill from AWS for 6,000. He was running 600 EC2 server instances. He normally has zero. So that was a bit of a giveaway there. And then cleaning things up was an absolute mess, both in terms of AWS and in terms of GitHub. So he blogged the whole thing out there for all of us to learn. Have we learned? Not really, yes and no. Uh, fast forward to 2021. You have to be living in a cave to not have heard of solar winds, intern leaks, passwords. They always blame the intern, don't they? Um, SolarWinds CEO testifying in front of Congress. This is not what you want. You do not want to ever find yourself testifying in front of Congress. That probably means that your breach was significant. But in this case, a an intern leaked an internal password, which you normally think would be safe, right? So if we move this way, you can see the SolarWinds password, SolarWinds123. I tell you, I have worked for a lot of different companies and I can guarantee you even the best intentions fall sideways when we're creating internal passwords. They're almost placeholders. We still use password123, SolarWinds123. They It matters. Internal passwords matter as well, but that's probably for another webinar. All right, let's move. So what is a secret? Let's, let's expand our definition of that. If we go back to these guys here, the hackers cult slash almost comedy film from the nineties. Now when they, you can see it like on the weird lighting on their faces above me, love, God, secret password had to be in there. Surely. Uh, these were the, we obviously were not paying brute forcing. Let's say brute forcing was pretty easy back in the nineties. You're not that, or are you a skilled hacker? Really? It's it probably seemed pretty easy back then. Now though, it probably doesn't look much better. This was from a report from Dashlane, I believe it was, or one password or last pass or a password management company. They released their, every year they released their top passwords. 2021, number one was one, two, three, four, five, six. Passwords in there, QWERTY's in there. So I'm just kidding. SolarWinds123 was not in there, but you get the idea. These are all very simple passwords. And you're probably thinking, I don't use pass. Does anybody use password? Can you even use password anymore? Because there's so many constraints around what you can do. I'm sure these are legacy, right? That's why they're still there. But we haven't, we really haven't, human nature has made it so that we never learn, right? That's what we do. That's our, that's what we're best at, not learning. Now what we do instead of writing password is we capitalize the P or maybe we add special character or perhaps we add a zero or we add a one or we uh, put an exclamation point on the end and uh, that's good, right? No one's gonna figure that out. That's crazy complicated. Oh, but then the my organization makes me change the password every month. So, okay, I can, I right, got it. So 
that's kind of what we do now. So why would we expect anything better uh, in the future? Now, to make matters more complicated when we're talking about secrets, automation needs passwords now. So now we have generated passwords, and those can be really messy. Like if we look at a SHA-256 of that word, password1, it's a big, messy, complicated thing. And when we look at that, we're like, ooh, okay. Well, what am I gonna do with that? What if you had to use that as you're creating automation? What if you're writing some code in Ansible, you're creating something in Terraform, and you need that to provision something or to create something? or configure something. What do you do with it? Well, your first instinct would be like, well, I'll just, do I hard, hard you, as soon as you say hard code, that's like a swear word in programming, isn't it? The H word, hard coding. So you don't wanna do that. You need some kind of strategy for your secrets. You need a supply chain for the secrets themselves that keeps them private. And that is a whole other problem. So let's talk about a little bit more about that. Let's get dive in. Secrets are passwords. So we're still in familiar territory, but what they represent in the real world is database credentials, encryption keys, API keys, SSH tokens. That is not an exhaustive list, right? I'm sure you realize that. And how do they get revealed publicly? Well, we saw those two examples. You can just forget to add files to your git ignore by accident or just simply through ignorance. You can hard code them into a container image that's there's lots of ways that container images can give away secrets not just that one we can do a whole webinar on that you can cut development corners by temporarily hard coding your credentials into something temporarily you're going to remove them it's fine right i'm not saying i've done that personally recently even though i know when i'm doing a webinar on this i have made that mistake it's easy it's too easy to do Finally, committing infrastructure as code templates like Terraform, CloudFormation, many are available into your GitHub with the credentials inside. And this is very, very easy to do. And you're probably even thinking, how could that even be possible? And you might be asking the question, what is infrastructure as code? Okay, it's possible. You're thinking, can you just do a quick definition of that? And I will do that, one slide. A one slide infrastructure as code. So. You want to provision things at scale. You don't want to do it manually. That is a massive pain. So you could, there's many formats of code for doing this. And there's many types or styles of doing this. So there is procedural, and that's probably very familiar. An example of that would be Ansible. And then there's declarative. And a good example of that would be Terraform or Kubernetes YAML. What does that look like in an abstract way? Well, think of it in terms of like making a cake, right? Preheat the oven to 160, mix flour, eggs, butter, until fluffy. The, imagine these are all commands in a script and you want them to be repeatable and do the same thing every single time. So you put them into your recipe or in Ansible's terms, a playbook. You run it, it will happen, you get the result, a cake is made. Although that is kind of assuming a bit of knowledge that I am a chef. And chef, hmm, interesting, okay. Um, which I might not be. What I like better and is becoming very popular is the Terraform example, as you can see. Now I rely on a provider who is to act as the, the creative, the chef. And I simply say, I need a resource, it's a cake. It's called birthday surprise. This is my spec. Icing fondant sponge, texture, diameter, layers, boom, make it. And that's all we have to do, and I have a cake. I really like that because you can even use that to look for drift to see if the cake changes over time. Does it match my coded definition? It is declared state instead of procedure. So that is a rough way of defining what infrastructure as code looks like. Now let's go back to how secrets get revealed publicly and talk a little bit about committing the infrastructure as code into GitHub. How does this happen? Does it happen? How often does it happen? Interestingly, you can see up there, I've got hacker news. GitHub Copilot, which was released just a few months ago in beta, regurgitates valid secrets. Does it really? I don't know. GitHub Copilot is an AI-driven plugin for VS Code, where a lot of people create these, these infrastructure as code templates. And what it's doing is it's spitting out predictive lines of code or even functions to make your code faster in a variety of different languages, including infrastructure as code templates. So in some instances, there were some claims, potentially conspiracy theory, maybe a little bit of trolling, 
that this co-pilot was spitting out passwords and API keys that were still valid based on the breadth of its knowledge from the massive GitHub code repository. Is this real? Was it not real? Nevertheless, people believed it because it it happens that often that it made sense that perhaps this was a possible thing. Let me make you make it clear though, I really tried to do it and I could not do it. So I don't know if it's possible or if they fixed it right away, but it so doesn't seem like it's doing it now. But nevertheless, what do you do if credentials are exposed? What if you accidentally did this? Let's let's put a little bit of corrective action in here just to, just so you get an idea. Of course, you should disable the keys that you think were in there, revoke them immediately, rotate them, look for compromised services like what happened to the individual who checked in their WordPress credentials and suddenly they had 600 servers running. Look for your logs for nefarious activities. Add, probably have to add new monitoring. Clean your Git history. That's not easy. And I'll show you a little bit that, about why that's not easy in a moment. It sometimes can be easier to delete the repository entirely if it's new and just create it in your current state if the history doesn't isn't that important to you. And then of course, monitor your supply chain. Look for breakages, look for anomalies, and understand that you might be part of someone else's supply chain. So your mistake might be affecting a lot of other people as is what happened with SolarWinds. So finally, and the important thing and why we're here today, add automation to scan your code for secrets so it doesn't happen again, and ideally it doesn't happen ever. Some best practices surrounding that, create that secret supply chain first before you need it in automation. Think about how you're going to do it. If you're in dev and you need, you just don't have it, you don't have access to it, whatever, always put your secrets into another file. Always put them somewhere else and then reference that file and add that file to your git ignore. That's smart. Don't put it into the comments like I did and check it in, that's dumb. Because even though, even though afterwards when you do the code right, because it's not hard coded anymore, you forgot you added it to a comment at one point and now it's like, oh, oh. If you're in prod, of course, use a production grade secrets manager like CyberArk or HashiCorp. Free ones are available, paid ones are available, and almost every cloud provider has one. So it's becoming easier and easier to do things right. It's more, I think, in dev where things go wrong or when we're rushing or when we're cutting corners, that problems can arise which is why we need to scan any code, be it our application, our infrastructure's code, anything needs to be scanned before it goes into GitHub, ideally as a pre-commit or on your desktop. So how do we do that? Well, let me introduce you to Chekhov. Chekhov is an open source tool for analyzing infrastructure as code. It, it analyzes all sorts of different types, Terraform, CloudFormation, ARM, Helm, Kubernetes, YAML, serverless framework. There are over 500 different rules that it is looking for for common misconfigurations. You can see some examples in the image just next to it there. However, we have improved Chekhov to add secrets, and that is really quite interesting. Chekhov, its new feature for scanning secrets is a combination of some of the things we already had in there. There were some, there was some secret scanning already there, combining Prowler, which is looking for AWS misconfigurations like CIS benchmarks and secrets with Yelp's Detect Secrets. Yelp, Yelp's Detect Secrets was written by an individual named Kevin Hawk. And actually, full disclosure, we asked him to be on this webinar and he kind of didn't want to do that. And I'm like, all right, no problem. Uh, I never met him. He's a very bright guy. But when I looked at his LinkedIn, I saw that, all right, not the most forthcoming. Um, his about says, hi, no picture, no background. Okay. Got it, no problem, you want to just write your code. He speaks through his GitHub account, which you can see right there. But combining those two together, we are able to create three different types of identifiers and ways of finding secrets in infrastructure as code. Regular expressions, keywords, looking for entropy, which is interesting. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So regular expressions are fantastic. If I look at the different types of regular expressions, we can see Artifactory, AWS, JSON, MailChimp, Slack, very specific ones, right? Stripe, Twilio. Regular expressions allow us to characterize a lot of different credentials, a lot of different secret types, so that not only do we find the secrets, but we can tell you specifics on how to remediate them, which is pretty cool. Now, also keywords versus entropy. Ooh, 
pardon me. If we look at an example of keywords, we're just looking for obvious things like API key, password. People do that. They just say, oh, password equals. And so there are some very obvious common low, co low hanging fruit in terms of finding secrets. Because if you call it API key, it's probably an API key. So we're looking for wording that fits those, those keywords. And then finally, entropy. Entropy, if you look at a, a past phrase, and there's a good example there, correct horse battery staple, four random words in a row, that looks weird. And you can find that using, using an entropy-based analysis. And now I could have put an API key up there like we saw earlier, that SHA-256. Now that, even to the human eye, looks weird. So that falls into the same category. But it's worth knowing that entropy extends beyond that into examples like this. And what we do uh, with Chekhov is we even combine all of that so that we're reducing false positives. So we're combining all the different checks together, but then characterizing the check into an individual type when we're done. So we've taken what Kevin Hawk has done, we've taken what Prowler's done, and we've added our own kind of secret sauce to that to make it really good. All right, you saw that. Let's take a look. Well, let's, let's do it now, all right. Uh, let me just share my screen really quick. Um, all right, screen low, there we are. Awesome. So I am in a Terraform directory. Look here. I have Terraform for a whole bunch of different formats. I've got AWS, Azure. It's all part of uh, a bridge crew, intentionally vulnerable environment. And I can run Chekhov. So let's do that. I ran it earlier. I've still got the command line here. Checkoff D AWS is going to check my AWS directory. And I've got a using I'm using quiet so that I get I don't get all the things that I successfully did. I know I don't need a pat in the back just yet. I'm just gonna look for the misconfigurations. So it's that simple. I'm gonna run that. And we're gonna see a whole bunch of bright colors go by. There we go. It's looking for everything. I didn't say just look for secrets. I don't have a configuration file. I don't have a baseline, any of the uh, other things that you can do with Chekhov. I'm, I'm scanning fresh. And we can already see some of the misconfigurations I have in here. So we just look right there, like right at the bottom. A base 64 high entropy string. You might be thinking, okay, looks like something bad. Clearly not base 64 example key there. We also could have caught this on secret key and probably combined some of what we we're doing to make sure that it was. Certainly we caught this one, access key, AWS access key. We're being pretty specific about that one, aren't we? Private key, so we're, we've caught this, most likely using a regular expression, and we could go out and we could see a few other ones, Slack token, basic auth credentials, Twilio API, Stripe access key. That's getting pretty specific, isn't it? That we found in here. And what's kind of even better about this is that we're offering guidance here. So you can see Get Secrets 17. If I go over here, we can see the kind of information that we've been given. We have very clean, clear instructions. Revoke the exposed secrets with administrator permissions. You can access the Stripe API and navigating to the developer section. It tells you what to do in the context of Stripe itself. And we can also see if we look down here, same thing goes for if it was a Twilio API key, which we did have, we get specific Twilio instructions on how to do that. So we're providing guidance that is specific to the type of key because we've characterized the regular expression specifically for that type, which is awesome. And there's upwards of, I think there's almost 20 different types of regular expressions we've got going on here. Now, of course, the last step, we say clean the Git history. We don't get into that. Easy. Just, what does Google clean Git history? And just one of many articles will come up that show you, hey, let's get started. A word of caution. Oh no, this is not a short article. So if you want to know the pain of cleaning your Git history, you can find it very easily. And this is just about having a tidy history. That article wasn't about how to eliminate and ensure that you've eliminate a leaked access key. That can be, that can be a lot worse, let's say. So that's how easy it was for me to find misconfigurations in my code, but also secrets that might be leaked in there and of a variety of different types and how easy it was for me to find instructions on how to remediate them, uh, very specific to the type of key that we had, which is great. Okay, so what are my key takeaways? Let's 
jump back to my screen share. And so key takeaways, keep, keep secret secrets. Well, that's secret secret. That is the whole point of this, this webinar. Be prepared for leaks in advance. Assume that the larger your organization, the higher the likelihood somebody is going to leak a secret. That would be bad. Create your secret supply chain in advance. So make sure you know how you're going to handle automation and secrets before you start creating that automation. That's ideal, it doesn't always happen, probably rarely happens, but understand what you're doing. And if you are in dev and you don't have some smooth automation with something like Vault, then always put those secrets into a separate file and add that to your Git ignore. So even just maintaining a best practice from an individual perspective is important. Remember that internal secrets can still create risk, scan all your code, not just your application, but also your infrastructure's code and not just your infrastructure's code, also your application. Scan locally if you can using Chekhov. It's easy to install on a Mac. It's like brew install Chekhov, super simple. Add it to CI. Chekhov has a GitHub action that is as simple as running it on your desktop. It's a one-liner GitHub action and you can embed this into your CI. And you can also use it as a pre-commit hook, which I highly recommend. And of course, finally, revoke and rotate keys often. In fact, when you're choosing services, make sure those services allow you to revoke and rotate keys. That can be an important way that you method you use to decide what services you're going to use in the future, because it's really important. Okay, that is the end of this webinar. Once again, my name is Steve Jaguer. I hope you enjoyed this and you learned a little bit more about Chekhov, you learned a little bit more about secrets, and maybe you learned a little bit more about infrastructure as code. That's the end. Big thanks to the CNCF for hosting this. And if you have any more questions about Chekhov or your, and you'd like to maybe join our community, go check us out at codified security, all one word, dot slack dot com. Come join the community. That's where people talk about the open source tools that we've got at Bridge Crew and request new features, etc. So we'd love to see you there. My name's Steve Jaguer. Now, let's do the Scooby Doo ending. All right, anonymous hacker. Let's see who's really behind all of these data breaches. Danny DeVito. Whoa, I didn't see that one coming. My name's Steve Jaguer. This is the end of the webinar. Thanks for watching.